In this video, I'm gonna share with you the easiest and best way to create amazing quality long form content for your website. And if you do this, then your productivity is going to go through the roof. You're gonna save huge amounts of time, huge amounts of stress, and be able to pump out good quality content on your website. We're gonna be using a couple of tools, but the main one is going to be called Koala. So let's go and log in and have a look. So when you log into Koala, you'll see something like this. On the left-hand side, you will see the menu. We've got Koala Chat, Koala Writer, which is where you can get articles created. And we've got the different pricing options as well. So we'll look at pricing later on, but there are two main aspects to Koala. The Writer, which is writing long-form SEO-friendly blog articles, and Koala Chat, which they've said is a chat GPT alternative. Personally speaking, as somebody that uses ChatGPT, I don't use Koala Chat, but I found Koala Writer to be very useful for certain themes and topics. So let's click on Koala Writer. And what you'll be able to do is fill in the boxes and tell the software what you want it to do. So for example, I can click on this and I can call this Japan as a new project. We'll call this Japan. And then we'll come down here and we can choose to use ChatGPT 3.5 or version 4. Now, one thing to bear in mind is with Koala, you pay on the amount of words generated. And it says here, ChatGPT results in much higher quality articles. However, it's a five times increase in word count usage. So if you get a 1500 word article created, it will actually consume 7,500 words of your usage allowance. So you have to bear that in mind. So you'll either choose ChatGPT4 or 3.5. The article type, we've got a few things here. I'm gonna go with blog post. And now we put our target keyword. So I can put in here things to do in Aichi Prefecture, which is where I live in Japan. So if I wanted this to create a blog post for a travel site, telling people what they can do in a specific area, then this would be good. Now, one thing you gotta be careful of is any AI tools, they create content based on what's already out there. And oftentimes, content that is ranking well or it's out there, it's not always accurate, it's not always up to date, it can be badly written, so you have to understand that. And you have to also understand that any content generated by AI, while it might be grammatically okay and plagiarism free, it doesn't mean that it's up to date and that it's actually factually accurate. A lot of these tools will give you content that reads well, but if you don't have the ability to fact check something or you're lazy and you're not gonna do it, then you might have content that you're gonna paste on your website that's not gonna be accurate. Now, when it comes down to the next step, we have SEO optimization. We can have the default, we have the manual, and it tells you what it is here. Manual, it will specify a list of keywords to be used in the article. So if I was to click on manual, I've got to put specific keywords in here, or we can go with AI powered. Now it says AI powered, we will analyze top ranking pages and extract up to 100 topically relevant keywords and entities to use in the article. What I've found is when you do that, it will include links to these articles, which is great, but oftentimes these are articles which are going after the same keyword as you are, so you have to bear that in mind. So let's just go with default for now. Tone of voice, we've got these different things here. We can go with SEO optimized, language is fairly self-explanatory. Again, the country you want to rank for, I'm gonna leave this as US. Now this for me is really important. I like to use the second person. I'm not gonna use the first person because it's not based on me or my personal experience, because it's AI. And I just find that second person works really well. Third person sounds a little bit distant. Now you have these different options you can either choose to check. So if you want to include real-time results, we will fetch search results for each section and use data to help generate the article. Again, that's great, but you're gonna find that you'll be linking out to content going after the same keywords as you, as I mentioned earlier, and you're gonna to have to manually get rid of those. But that does also help you with the worry that AI would generate content that's out of date. But again, if it's doing this from articles that were published two or three years ago, you're gonna have a problem. So I'll check that for example. Now in this particular one, things to do in Aichi Prefecture, it's gonna mention different tourist attractions, but it might mention prices and opening hours that are just not true anymore. 
we're in a post-COVID world and also, you know, prices change. So if the top ranking article was written three years ago and I copy and paste this article onto my site, I could be telling people that certain attractions are cheaper than they really are. So bear that in mind. I definitely recommend you turn this on, uh, Outline Editor. I'm actually going to remove this for now. Use Outline Editor is going to be great because it allows you to get an outline before you go ahead and get your article written. And if you want to, you can include an FAQ section, which I find really useful. And then we're going to click Show Advanced Options. I personally don't put a lot of this stuff in. However, what I do do is I come in here and I just say use the active voice. Um, because I think that's really, really important. I don't like to use the passive voice. And this is an optional thing. You can have and include key takeaways, which is often presented just after the introduction as a kind of summary of what the reader is going to learn. Okay, and then you can see I've used a lot of my words. However, I'm going to click on Create Outline. And this is going to take a little while and then it's going to basically give me an outline of an article and if I'm happy I can then click to write. So let me pause this while it's making this outline. Okay so it's given me an outline, it's given me an introduction, then it's going to give me uh, an h2 tag of historical sites and it's going to put these three historical sites in there. Now I know that these are really in this area so that's fine. Outdoor activities, well, the museum is not really an outdoor activity, it's inside, so that doesn't really fit in here, so I might have to change things around. I know that all of this stuff is true to the area, I know that these are the famous foods, I know that these are real festivals and events, but there's a few things here. So for example, Toyota Automobile Museum to me is not an outdoor activity, it doesn't mention other famous things like the aquarium, and a few other things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down and I'm going to add a section. So I might click add section and I might put for example uh, family outings. I'll hit add section. Then I'm going to drag this up here and just put it somewhere that would make sense. So I might you know kind of put it in there then I just need to make that an h2 tag. Now I'm going to come down and I'm going to add a section and I'm going to put Nagoya aquarium because that's a big part of where I live. Add that and then I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to make sure that that is in here. And again I'm just going to go through and play around with this now. I might move Toyota Automobile down here because that's a big thing for kids. There's also a Ghibli Museum which people are really interested in who come to this area. There's also a Legoland and a bunch of stuff that this outline has just not given me. Now I wouldn't know that if I didn't have specific knowledge about the topic at hand. So again, you do need to have a little bit of knowledge about what you are creating so that you can add to it or can, you can remove it. Now, if you don't like this outline, you can then refresh the outline here. And if you're happy, you will just hit write article and it's going to write it. Now, as you can see, I probably don't have enough credits to get a full article written. So I'm not going to go ahead and have this article written in this particular post. But to give you an example of an article that I've written before, I'll go ahead and show you now. So here's an article that Koala wrote, 4,482 words. If I were to write this from scratch, it would take me a long time. However, I can get this outline and then I can edit it, I can format it, I can copy and paste it to my WordPress dashboard and just go ahead and split, up, split it up into shorter paragraphs, add images, add my internal and external links and just basically optimize my post before I hit publish. But you can see it's done a really good job. We've got an introduction, key takeaways, an overview of the prefecture, historical significance, and we've got all of this stuff here. And this is actually a post that I've taken, I've made look nice, and I've put on my website. And here's the article now that it's live on my site. I've got this featured image that I made in Canva, which was nice and simple to do. I've added a bunch of images. These are images that either I've taken or I have the rights to use. Sometimes I'll need to use Creative Commons images and just link out to the source. We've got the key takeaway section here. We've got you know the table of contents that we can look at. We've got all of this stuff down here. And it's just an article that I've taken the time to format, add the internal and external links where necessary. And this kind of usage of Koala really does save me a bunch of time. Now I don't think that 
people should use this for every single article that they've written. And this article, as I scroll back to the top, it's 4,482 words. So you're gonna to need to have a specific plan if you want to create articles like this all of the time. But you can do this once a month, or twice a month for a particular blog post. And then also for other articles, you can incorporate private label rights content, stuff that you've outsourced or you've written yourself. Now, when it comes to how much Koala costs, it really does depend. They've got a bunch of plans. The cheap plans sound good, but they are a little bit limited. So we're gonna come past these. So we've got the $9 a month, uh, which gives you 15,000 words. Remember if you're using ChatGPT, the words actually take up five times the usage. So for most people, probably gonna be looking at a starter plan uh, at the smallest. I've actually got a professional plan. Um, so I have 100,000 words per month. I've been using that for a while. You can get more expensive plans in here. You can get like, you know, a million words a month, but obviously that's gonna cost you. They've even got 10 million words, but not everybody's gonna to wanna to spend $2,000 a month. They've got a bunch of plans um, and you can kind of go through the, um, FAQ here, it's easy to upgrade, it's easy to cancel. They've got a really active Discord group for updates and questions. And again, it's got a lot of big marketers that use this. I do think that a lot of people think AI is, you know, click a button and you've got stuff. You still need to, as I've said before, fact check it, format it, you know, maybe rewrite an introduction, rewrite a summary so it's got some of your own words in. And also you can still add to stuff. Even though the Hiroshima article was massive, I've still got a few sections in there that I've added to this because I'll take this article and then I'll run it through another tool. And let me show you that. I actually take the article that is given to me after doing the fact checking and making sure that everything's fine. I'll copy and paste it and I'll put it into Surfer SEO and then I'll need to edit it more to better optimize the article to give it a better chance of ranking in the future. Obviously, it's not gonna be instantaneous, and my domain is fairly new, so it is gonna take time, but it's a consistent process that I go through. And you can see now that it kind of checks all the boxes with regards to the word count, headings, paragraphs, and the amount of images that are optimal to use. And then it gives me suggestions and it tells me there are certain phrases that I could potentially add more of. There are certain phrases that I maybe have got too many times, uh, phrases that I'll need to add more of, whether, you know, red is basically bad. It's like a traffic light, red is bad, green is good, and um, amber is so-so. So you wanna try to, within reason, try and get as many things green as possible. I don't go through every keyword and you don't wanna keyword stuff just to get this number up because again, it's just a guide but I find by doing this stuff, it really, really helps me. So again, I have an idea, I put it through Koala, I'll get the article, I'll proofread it, fact check it, add to it, I'll then copy and paste it into Surfer, and then just do a little bit of optimization in here, I'll then put it in my WordPress dashboard, and then I'll go through with the internal links, the external links, the images, and anything else that I need to do, and then I can hit publish. And again, because these are paid tools that I'm using, I don't use them for every single article because you just don't have enough credits, both on Koala and on Surfer. But I think by doing a combination of these two things, it does give you a better chance and maybe in several months, this article will rank a little bit higher than it would if I weren't to do this stuff. Thanks for watching. If you wanna check out any of the tools that I've mentioned in this video, you can do so below. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't mind, and I'll see you in another video soon. Take care.